Are you looking to make some beautiful farmhouse DIYs for Christmas on a teeny tiny budget? Well, you've come to the right place. Hi, I'm Gwen. Welcome to At Home with Gigi. Today, we're going to be using trash to treasure Dollar Tree items and things we already have on hand to make some absolutely beautiful Christmas DIYs. Let's get started. Y'all are not going to believe how quick and easy this DIY is. We're going to be using these two glass vases from the Dollar Tree. I took them outside, gave them one coat only of the frosted glass spray from Rust-Oleum because I don't want them to be opaque. I want you to be able to see through them. We're going to put some beautiful candles in them. We are going to be creating our own designs to go on the vases, and I've taken a sheet of tissue paper that can use stuff in gift bags, cut it down, wrapped it around a piece of printing paper, taped it down really, really well. We don't want to jam up our printer. And on an inkjet printer, I printed off these cardinals. Now, I found mine on Canva, but if you don't have access to Canva, they do have a free version, but you can also Google cardinals, and there's free clip art that you can print off that way. Or you can just simply use a napkin. But anyway, I'm going to fussy cut out my cardinals in the greenery. I just prefer it for this project. I'm just going to try to make sure my cardinal is as centered and straight as I possibly can. And to keep him from moving around, I'm just going to hold him in place with one hand while I add my Mod Podge. Now I'm trying very hard not to add too much Mod Podge. I can get a little heavy handed at times because I was afraid you know, this red ink, it might bleed. But I did not have any bleeding whatsoever, thankfully. And I'll explain to you in just a moment what I do to prevent that. I'm just using this sponge and I'm just dabbing it and tap, tap, tapping. I want to say a special thank you to one of my sweet subscribers, Cynthia. The last time I tried this, my I used a wet sponge and my project bled just a little bit. And she told me that she uses a dry sponge. So my sponge is dry this time, Cynthia, and I did not have any bleeding whatsoever. So thank you so much. But again, I'm just tap, tap, tapping and just smoothing everything out as best I can. Now you can also use plastic wrap. That is something that I love to do, but I also like to try new things sometimes as well. Now what I do to prevent bleeding when I print on tissue, I spray my project with hairspray. I let it dry completely and I put my oven on low heat, about 200, put it in there for about five minutes. This is not for everybody, so do it at your own discretion. I stand right there by it and making sure nothing is gonna go wrong because you know you just have to use caution. I'm gonna put a piece of plastic wrap over the tissue because I really want to smooth everything out, get, in, get out any excess Mod Podge because this is glass, everything will show. Get out any wrinkles that might still be there. There's very few, y'all. Tissue is so forgiving, I love working with it. And then I'm just continuing to smooth everything out, just making sure I want it to look like it's an actual part of the glass. And I can't wait for y'all to see the end result and tell me what you think. I think I've succeeded, but hey, you tell me. Just be careful when you're lifting up the plastic wrap because it will be sticky. And then I just repeated the exact same process on the other vase. It was so easy, so fast. Y'all see me doing the little happy dance. I'm so happy and so pleased with how this turned out. They are just absolutely beautiful, at least in my opinion. But you don't have to put cardinals on your vases. You could use any design, any Santas, angels, poinsettias, whatever, or even during the spring or summer, fall, pumpkins, bunny rabbits, whatever might be the case. It would be just a very simple and inexpensive project to make. For this project, we're going to be using this tobacco basket, and someone gave it to me. They were going to throw it out, and I'm like, hey, I can fix it up and hopefully remake it, and that's just what I'm doing. I'm just reattaching where some of the little pieces have come loose with some glue, 
and just kind of holding it in place. Then I'll sand down the rough edges. I'm gonna take it outside and give it two coats of Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte in white. I've cut down a little piece of floral foam and I'm just gonna hot glue that to the top of the basket. And I'm gonna use a variety of greenery, except where I'm not gonna use the red berries that's laying there on the table. Now the greenery I'm gonna be using for this project is all from last year. I have not seen anything like this at my local Dollar Trees this year. Matter of fact, they have very, very little florals, just a few poinsettias, things like that. So hopefully they're gonna get something soon. Anyway, I'm just cutting them down and then just layering them in at different lengths on each side of the foam. Originally, I had not planned to hot glue these pieces in, but later on you will see that I will have to start hot gluing them in because some of the smaller pieces did start to pop out as I got closer to the top of this little small piece of foam. I just want to take a brief moment and say welcome to all of my new subscribers. I am so very happy to have you here. And of course, to all of my returning subscribers, thank you so much for returning and choosing to return and watch my videos each week. I truly appreciate each and every one of you and so happy to have you here. Now the next day when I came back and was looking at this, I realized it needed longer pieces to come down into the bottom of the basket. And y'all, I guess I did not push the record button hard enough, so I am so sorry about that. But I just basically layered in these longer stems like I did the shorter ones until I got the length that I was looking for and the fullness that I was looking for. We're gonna be adding these three pine cones to the tobacco basket. And to do that, I'm tying a loop at the end of this twine, and then I'm going to hot glue that loop as close to this top and center of the pine cone as I can. And the reason for that is I want them to hang straight down, kind of like a bell would hang straight down. And then I'm going to have them tied at varying lengths. But after I get the loop hot glued on top, I'm going to just pop in just a little bit of this greenery. And again, this is greenery that came from the Dollar Tree last year. And I'm just snipping off the little tips of them and then just hot gluing the little greenery on each side. And then I'll pop some of these berries right in the center to kind of cover up my hot glue. I'm just making sure of the placement of my pine cones and making sure they're at the right length before I tie off the twine. And I've looped it through that center bar right there and I'm gonna tie it in a really tight knot and pull it just as tight as I can. Then once I clip off those excess ends, I'm gonna go in with some hot glue and I'm gonna put a good amount of hot glue on there just to make sure I'm keeping everything in place and that it doesn't move around. I'm gonna finish adding in some greenery to cover up the floral foam, and then I'm gonna add these gorgeous red berries, and these came from Hobby Lobby. I picked up several stems recently. They were only $1.99 each, but I just love them. They are so pretty. And then for the perfect finishing touch, I'm gonna to add in this beautiful cardinal, and this came from Amazon. I got a packet of four of them back during the summer for another project I have planned, and I'll try to remember to link it down below for you. I love cardinals, they just mean, have such a special meaning to me. And I am ecstatic about this piece. It cost me so very little money for such a beautiful piece. To make this project, we're gonna be using two of these wooden houses. Mine came from the Dollar Tree. And then actually we're gonna use four of these large popsicle sticks. And I'm just gonna go ahead and measure out the length that I need for each side of the house. We're gonna be creating a little steeple roof. I'm gonna 
to use these heavy duty shears and these came from Amazon. If I can find them again, I'll try to remember to link them. I bought these several years ago. They are great for cutting popsicle sticks. If you ever use regular scissors, you know that it can cause your popsicle stick to splinter and crack in the center. These are wonderful. I just hit each end of the popsicle stick and the houses with my sanding block, wiped everything down. Then I'm going in with alabaster from Waverly Chalk Paint and just giving each of them a coat of paint. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to be adding scrapbook paper to each of the houses. I'm using scrapbook paper that looks like shiplap. I'm just using because it's in my stash. If you don't have this, you can always just use a ruler and a pencil, draw in the lines, smudge them just a little bit, works just fine. Like I said, I have this on hand, I'm using it. And I'm measured out or traced around my house and I'm cutting it as closely as I can. Again, if you get it a little bit over, just use your sanding block and remove that excess paper. And I'm going to go in with a fairly heavy layer of Mod Podge and then we're just going to attach the scrapbook paper to each of the houses. Now, this one, as you can see, I have the shiplap lines going up and down and then for the other house, they'll be going crossways. Now, I'm going to use my fingers to squeegee out any excess air bubbles or Mod Podge. Now, this, ship, this scrapbook paper is very thick. If you are using a napkin or tissue paper, don't use your fingers. You're going to tear it. Use a sponge plastic wrap, anything like that. I want the roof of the, each of the houses to look like it's got a really heavy layer of snow on it, so to get that look, I'm using caulk and I'm just using like a swirling, dabbing motion and just going up and down, kind of like you're putting icing on a cookie or something like that. And then while each of the popsicle sticks are still wet, I'm going to go in and sprinkle it with some of the faux snow from the Dollar Tree because y'all know I love some shine and sparkle. I want to add a wreath to the front of each of the houses but I didn't have one this small so I'm just going to make one and I'm using a little piece of greenery that fell off of a pick or something and I'm just looping the two ends together and just twisting it around to hold it in place and then I'm just going to bend and shape it till I get the shape that I'm looking for and because it looks so crazy we're going to give it a really good haircut. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to the front of the house and then once that's in place I'm going to go in and add some of these little tiny berries. I'm just going to snip off some little small clusters and then just hot glue those around the wreath. I want the wreaths to look like they've been dusted by snow, so I'm just using an old paintbrush and a little bit of white paint and just kind of dabbing and stippling over the wreath and the berries. To attach the popsicle sticks, I'm going to use hot glue. Now when I first tried this, I tried using a combination of wood glue and hot glue. Did not work, would not stay, so I sanded everything down, tried it again with only hot glue, worked like a charm. There is a little tiny gap where the two pieces meet, but don't worry about that. We're going to cover that up in just a bit. We're going to be adding little signs to the front of each of the houses. Now, they're actually miniature ornaments from Walmart. I bought these two or three years ago, and they came in a pack of six or eight. I can't remember exactly, but anyway, I don't know if they'll have them again this year. But I wanted the word believe to be read. So I'm just using my red paint pen and go, tracing over it very carefully. I did end up going over it twice because I really wanted it to be red. And I considered going over the word Christmas on this little sign and with my red paint pen. But I was like, no, I really love this. I think it's just so cute just the way it is. And I'm just using a little bit of hot glue to attach them. To cover the seam where the two popsicle sticks meet, I'm just going to hot glue this little red bird at the very top and then at the bottom of the bird I'm going to go around it with some more caulk to make it look like it's sitting in a bed of snow. I absolutely love these. I think they turned out so perfect and they are a great addition to my hut. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I truly, truly appreciate that. If you're here with me and you're not subscribed, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button. It's an absolutely free way to support my channel and it would just mean so very much to me. 
again thank y'all so much and i will see you soon